Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we are going to discuss about the different modifications a typical stem can undergo. So let us see what are the different modifications of the stem that is possible. The first modification is known as the food storage. Here from the name we can understand that the stem which is mostly underground stem, they are modified in such structures that they can store the food materials. So as you can see the potato, ginger, so these are the modified stem or the uh, underground stem which is modified as stored food structure. So they act as or organs of the perination. Why? Because these stored food that it can be utilized during the unfavorable conditions when other materials or the raw materials would not be available in the environment then these stored food uh, is used by these type of plants in order to survive. For example is the potato and ginger. The next structure is known as or the next modification is known as the stem tendrils. So these develop from the axillary buds. So these axillary buds they become slender, they become spirally coiled. So this is the example. So they become slender, they become spirally coiled which help to climb. So these spiral structures they can stick to other st uh, structures or other plants or trees and because of that it provides support and they can climb and move straight ahead towards light. So these are the stem tendrils which help in climbing of the plants. For example is cucumber pumpkin. So these are the structures which, which arise in uh, the plants which does not have proper woody stem. So the stem of these type of plants they are quite weak and they are quite flexible. So hence these type of tendril like structures or spirally coiled structures uh, arise which help in the climbing of the plants. The next modification is known as the thorns. So this is very common we know the axillary bird they get modified into woody straight and pointed structures. These are needle like structures. Why? These actually provide protection for the plants from the grazing animals. So that the grazing animals cannot eat these type of plants. Hence these are structures are formed like thorns. For example citrus, bougainvillea. So this is a typical structure of a thorn. These are formed. These are modified stem structures. The next modification is known as the phylloclade. So what are these? These are interesting type of modifications which are mostly found in xerophytes or the plants which are growing in very dry regions. So these are green flattened or cylindrical type of stem. stem. So the stem they become green, they flattened or at times they become cylindrical also. So what is the function? They take form and the function of the leaf. Why? Because we know in the xerophytic type of environment or climate, so the availability of water is less. So if the plants would have leaves, then presence of the stomata, it would result in the loss of water due to transpiration. So in order to avoid those type of losses, the stem, they get modified into leaf-like structure, they bear chlorophyll and they contain chlorophyll and hence they can perform photosynthesis without the loss of water, unlike the leaves. So these are found in xerophytic plants, for example, opangsia and euphobia. The next type of modification is known as the runner. So from the name we can understand, these are creeping type of stem which can run along the surface of the soil with long internodes. So the internodes are quite longer, so they can creep along the ground. These can grow in all directions, there is no specific direction, they can, uh, they can spread in all type of all directions and they can spread to new niches. So new type of areas they can spread because of this characteristic of spreading in all di uh, directions. So the older parts die. For example, if uh, we can see here, the plant has started growing from here and it is moving in this direction. Now if this older part, when it dies, these get detached. So this will get detached and it will form a new plant. So older parts die and separate from the parent to form independent plants. A very common example is the grasses. The normal grass which we find, these are the runners. The next type of modification of the stem is known as a suckers. These are exactly almost similar to the runners. They can also uh, have creeping movement and move along the soil. So these are slender lateral branches which arises from the base of the main axis. So this is very important. It absolutely arises from the base of the main axis of the stem. They grow aerially. So first they will grow aerially. So uh, it uh, goes up and then slowly arcs downwards and then touches the ground. So where it touches, 
it forms a new plant. So a very good example is the mint plant. The next type of uh, stem modification is known as a stolon. So these are slender lateral branches which appears from the lower part of the main axis. So this has a this is similar to the previous one like the suckers where the uh, stem was arising from the base of the main axis but here it is mostly from the lower and not absolutely at the base of the main axis. So lower regions of the main axis they give rise to the stolon like structure as you can see over here. So the lateral branches they grow aerially not absolutely like these type of suckers. Here you can see the plant has grown but here it grows aerially to some extent and then arches and finally touches the ground. Wherever it touches the ground it forms roots. So they bear ro roots to get fixed into the soil. So here so you can see the it has uh, grown aerially and it has touched the ground. Wherever it has touched it has formed roots and a new plant has formed. A very good example is jasmine. The next example or the next type of modifications of the stem is known as the offset. These are found in absolutely in the aquatic plants or plants growing in water. So they bear clusters of leaves as you can see here there are two types of example pistia and echonia. So here they bear clusters of leaves near the water or the surface of the ground mostly in the surface of the water. So these are the adventitious roots inside the water. So these roots mostly adventitious they remain inside the water. A very common example is the water hyacinth. So these are the structures, these are the offsets or the stem which extends. So at each nodes a new plant will be arising and the roots of which are mostly adventitious they remain under the water. So in this video we have talked about the various modifications a stem can undergo. I hope you have understood and liked this video. Thank you.